I recently flew on a Southwest Airlines 737 MAX 8 from San Diego to Honolulu. It was kind of neat, but honestly, I don't think I would do it again. There are many reasons why, which is exactly what I am about to show you. And as always, huge thanks to my favorite VPN, Surfshark, for sponsoring this video. Good morning from Terminal 1 at the San Diego International Airport. My name is Scott. I'm most widely known for my super nerdy airline reviews over at Sandspotter.com. And yes, I am finally going to fly Southwest Airlines to Hawaii. By the way, it's kind of hard to see, but the all new Terminal 1 build seems to be coming along nicely and it's looking great. So yeah. Southwest Airlines to Hawaii is a thing now, and it's something that I'm still having a hard time wrapping my head around. They actually serve several Hawaiian destinations from San Diego, and this morning I'm going out to Honolulu on flight number 2230. I'm not gonna lie, I'd much rather be doing this on a Hawaiian Airlines A330, but curiosity got the best of me, so here I am. Knowing how behind I was on responding to comments and questions on Sandspotter.com, and that I'm about to be without internet access for the next five hours, I launched Surfshark, hunkered down, and got typing. Surfshark has been my VPN of choice since 2019, and I depend on it heavily whenever I'm on public Wi-Fi like I am here in the San Diego airport. Why? Well, let me tell you. It runs totally in the background on my devices, doing its thing without me even noticing. It allows me to browse the internet privately so that no one can see or steal my data. It will allow me to change my IP address to prevent tracking from one website or app to the next. It'll block ads and malware. And the best part, it's insanely fast. I can't even tell that I'm using a VPN. It's awesome, and if you want to experience it for yourself, Now's the time. Surfshark is offering new subscribers a really hard to resist offer of 83% off, plus, get this, an extra three months added on top of that, free of charge. Which is kind of insane considering how well it'll protect your personal information. And the only way to get this deal is to use the promo code SCOTT in conjunction with the link in the description below. Anyway, thanks to Surfshark being so fast, I was able to get everything done that I needed to this morning, just in time to soak up the unmatched opulence of Terminal 1. <laughs> yes, I am being sarcastic. Parked here at Gate 7 is the 737 MAX 8 taking me to Honolulu today, and when you're flying out of Terminal 1 like this, all you can really hope for is an on-time departure. It's always crowded in here, there aren't many places to sit, and yep, that's just one of the reasons why I don't like flying Southwest Airlines out of San Diego. That said, Terminal 1 is going to be an amazing place to fly out of in just a few short years, and I cannot wait for that. But for now, this is the pre-flight experience for Southwest flights to Hawaii out of San Diego. Another thing that I don't like about flying Southwest especially on longer flights, is the open seating policy. Maybe it's just me, but I would feel far less stress and anxiety with an assigned seat assignment. I really don't like the idea of it being a complete free-for-all once on board, as air travel can be stressful enough without having to scramble for a seat, just like we did in grade school playing musical chairs. I did pay extra for a business select ticket though, which moved me to the front of the line for the boarding process. I'm not totally sure, but I don't think you can do that playing musical chairs. Here we go with my first time ever on a Southwest Airlines 737 MAX 8. Which is actually kind of surprising considering that there are over 150 of these things in the Southwest fleet at the time of this recording. That makes them the largest operator of the MAX 8 and me a little late to the game. Anyway, 
I chose seat 7F today. Yes, I know that I could have snagged a seat in the exit row if I wanted it, but since I'm making a video, I'll get better window view B-roll seated ahead of the wing like this. But yeah, it's nice to be back on Southwest. I'm a big fan of their newest interior, which this is, and it's easily as nice looking as anything that American Airlines, Delta, or United is doing these days. Sure, the seats are a little thin, but legroom is decent, and I highly appreciate the adjustable headrests. There are no video screens, of course, not even power outlets, if you can believe it, but that's just something you have to deal with if you choose to fly Southwest. The best option, Hawaiian Airlines, features video screens at every seat. Just saying. And what have we here? <laughs> Apparently, I'm either really ugly or scary looking, probably both, as nobody wanted to sit next to me today. Nice. The best part about flying Southwest Airlines to Hawaii is the price. Would you be impressed if I told you that I only paid $230 for this one-way ticket? No? Well, what if I told you that the price included the additional cost of splurging for the business select option, which adds perks such as priority boarding and a free premium drink coupon? Either way, I was really satisfied with what I paid for this, which if memory serves me correctly, is the cheapest that I've ever paid for a flight from San Diego to Honolulu. I just can't imagine that Hawaiian Airlines is all that happy about this. And again, they do offer a better in-flight experience in my opinion, even in economy, and I am willing to pay more for that. By the way, here's a closer look at the progress of the Terminal 1 rebuild project, and it's looking great. I suppose, <laughs> as it's kind of hard to understand what I'm looking at exactly, but I cannot wait until this opens. They say it's going to be 2025, so my fingers are crossed that they can pull it off by then. And on that positive note, this is it. We're headed straight out over the Pacific Ocean on an aircraft type with an arguably sketchy past. So if you never hear from me again, thanks for all the support, and it was fun while it lasted. I guess. Flying time from San Diego to Honolulu is five and a half hours on a good day, but thanks to a helpful shortcut from ATC and lighter than normal winds, the captain says we're going to do it in five, which is the perfect amount of time that I'll need to decide if this is something that I ever want to do again. In order to start my evaluation, let's have a look at the in-flight entertainment. Many people don't know this, but Southwest Airlines onboard entertainment is really good, actually. The only caveat is that you'll have to use your personal device to access it. Oh, and it's important to know that there are no power outlets in these seats. Maybe there are, but I couldn't find them, <laughs> which really shouldn't be shocking considering that I wouldn't even be able to recognize Michael Jackson if he was sitting next to me. But yeah, as much as I would prefer to be flying Hawaiian Airlines today, I'll admit that so far, this is not bad. That's Catalina Island, the last bit of land we'll see before reaching the shores of Oahu, assuming everything goes to plan, that is. And what better way to take your mind off crashing into the ocean at 500 miles an hour is there <laughs> than having a look at the in-flight menu. Soda, juice, coffee, water, and tea is free on Southwest Airlines. There is alcohol too, but you're gonna have to pay for it. Unless you paid for a business select ticket like I did, in which case you'll get a free premium drink to go with your snack box. And yes, I said snack box. I've always wondered if Southwest offered anything more substantial than the usual bags of snacks on these longer Hawaii flights, and, well, I suppose this does qualify as more substantial. And I hate to say it, but this is probably better than the disgusting school cafeteria quality pulled pork sandwich thing that I ate the last time that I flew Hawaiian Airlines economy class. It's also more than I was expecting, for sure, but 
It goes without saying that you're probably better off bringing your own food on flights out to Hawaii and back on Southwest Airlines. And for what it's worth, <laughs> I completely forgot about my drink coupon. They don't make it obvious, and heck, I didn't even know where to look for it, so as usual, I went with the tap water from El Paso. After all these years of flying, I still get nervous flying over open water like this. Yep, <laughs> we're pretty much screwed if anything happens. At least it'll be a somewhat comfortable ride on the way down, I guess. No, these seats aren't as nice as what you'll get in Hawaiian Airlines economy, but I do have to say that I wasn't so eager to get up and stretch as much as I thought I would. Therefore, this Lou review is the result of drinking too much El Paso tap water and not an excuse to stretch my legs. Speaking of snacks, this small little bag of brownie brittle was on my tray when I returned from the lavatory. Just for comparison, Alaska Airlines serves complimentary Mai Tais to everyone in economy prior to landing in Hawaii, which is brilliant yet bold. But I fully understand why Southwest decided that maybe it's not such a good idea to give out free alcohol to an entire plane load of people. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Welcome to Hawaii. Well, almost. We've begun the descent, and I don't see anything yet, but I am keeping an eye out. There we go. That's the northeastern shore of Oahu down there, and more than anything, I can't believe that I actually flew to Hawaii on Southwest Airlines. Not that they're a bad airline or anything. As a matter of fact, I've always found them to be a really convenient option to secondary and smaller cities all over the U.S. But Hawaii? I don't think I'm fully on board with that yet. My biggest issue, by far, is the open seating policy. Choosing a seat is one of my favorite parts of the airline booking process, and showing up to the airport not knowing if I'm going to have a good seat or not for a five-hour flight out to Hawaii adds a layer of stress to the journey that, quite frankly, I don't need or want. The lack of premium seating options is also something that'll keep me away. I actually don't mind splurging on a seat with more legroom for long flights out to the islands. It just adds to the experience, in my opinion, and I don't like how Southwest doesn't give me the option. <laughs> and on that grumpy old man note, welcome to Honolulu. By the way, I didn't speed up these clips at all. This is how fast we actually taxied into the gate, <laughs> which kind of had me concerned that maybe one of the pilots really needed to use the bathroom. Like, now. Anyway, it's so weird seeing Southwest Airlines here. And it's not just like a flight or two a day. They run a decent-sized operation in and out of Honolulu, including inner island flights, which can only lead me to believe that Hawaiian Airlines is none too pleased about it. Competition is healthy, though, and if I'm being honest, I do feel that Hawaiian Airlines has been slacking a little bit over the past five years or so. Southwest Airlines entering the Hawaiian market is a good thing. It may not be for me, but I have absolutely no doubt that they will be fine running full planes between the U.S. mainland and Hawaii for many years to come. Especially if they can keep prices as low as they were for this particular flight. Then again, this flight was maybe 60% full, and most everyone who wanted an empty seat next to them got it, so <laughs> what do I know? No matter. It felt really nice to be in Hawaii again, and I do appreciate you watching all the way through to the end. Maybe someday I'll come up with a, an award for those of you having the strength to sit through an entire video of mine, but until then, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. <laughs>